everyone, what is going on? Everybody? Hello! It is Pixmarters here, and welcome back to Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. When we left off... We got a lot more testimony. We've got everyone up here. We're moving forward a little bit. We found out about the tomato juice that Amir got a little bit of his hands on and knocked his ass out. I realize I'm voicing so, so yes. many people right now. <laughs> and this seems to be the case that Jean Grey had no motive to kill the alchemist unless we do a turnabout on our thinking. The classic Phoenix <laughs> way. But we got a couple more testimonies to press to see if we can get any like more information. Our hair looks like chonky bananas. Oh my god. Hold it! <laughs> Anyways. Am I wrong? No. <laughs> you mean you became a courier because of Sir Belduc? That's right. I was also a... a, a, a what, what do you call it? An, an orphan. <laughs> oh. I've been stealing bread or apples and such from the stalls and shops to survive. I was known far and wide among the traders from the shopping area. I was famous, or rather, I infamous. Was she stealing from Mrs. Eclair too? And one day Miss Grail took me there to Sir Belduc's residence, I mean. Sir Belduc helped me. He helped me to find a suitable job. And so you became a courier. So you have the urchin background. <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh. See, I only had one real skill. I'm light-footed. First, I didn't take it seriously. The job, I mean. I didn't care about work. Then I realized it. That it's not so bad to be useful, you know, to other people. It's also almost like you were... Some part of you felt like you were born for this job. <laughs> so I am a lot soon too, you see? So Bell Duke, I mean. Oof, what a heartwarming story. I think the judge just wiped away a tear with the rim of his hood. <laughs> The more you hear about Sir Belduc, the more obvious it would become that no one had any reason to want to kill him. It sure does seem that way. Yeah, like he he helped the townspeople like yeah. so much. All right, this is what I want to I want to see about the the confidentiality obligation. Hmm. This seems important. <gasps> yeah. The confidentiality obligation is a rule held among couriers. Is that right? Yes. Courier must not disclose the contents of a letter, nor the names nor addresses of its sender and recipient. But I'll tell you, you confident, tell you confidentially that um, I love gossiping, bad mouthing people especially. So I wasn't confident I could keep it. The confidentiality obligation, I mean. I was tempted to talk about this and that. To think that Bell Duke trusted her. <laughs> but then Sir Bell Duke spoke to me. He told me this. Think about how you feel in that person's place. And that got me thinking. I really, really like to gossip, but when it comes to being gossiped about, not so much. <laughs> People's messages are their secrets, and secrets must be kept. Damn. Indeed, no one would want their letters to be publicly known. She's certainly determined when it comes to confidentiality. Yeah. That's why she doesn't want to disclose the addressee of Bell Duke's letter. I'm not going to get it out of her. I promise, Sir Belduke, and I'm going to keep it no matter what. I promise, I mean. It's something I can pride myself on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I have some pride, right? <sighs> End of the road for testimony. <clears throat> Everyone knows that Miss Grey respected Sir Belduke. That's why it seems so inconceivable that she could be the killer. She doesn't have any motive. But that crime did take place. At this point, what we probably need to do is look at this case from a different angle. Change the perspective, so to speak. We just need to look at it from another angle? I wonder. I feel we're getting close to the truth here. Now we just need to follow it through. That's an attorney's <laughs> duty. little determined face. <laughs> yes. I'm sure you can do it, Mr. Wright. Thanks. He's like, mmm. <laughs> All right. Who was it that, uh... Uh, was it on this one where we press it and then we get the is there evidence for it thing? Hold on, as a that needs a opinion, thoughts, Do you still think anything? A motive. Motive for murder. There was a lot. Let's see. Okay, so with the way of pushing it, let's suggest another motive. It wasn't for murder. Like I thought, it was an accident. So I was right on my thought process. I understand. The defense will present evidence. We'll see if you were right or not. Evidence to indicate Jean Grail's motive for murder. No, 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 no. No. 
No, no, no. Wait, what? No. What's this about no, Sir Blue Knight? <laughs> no. Sir Stop. Belduke's life was sl taken that day. <laughs> That's a fact. However, was this actually the culprit's true objective? Objection. What? This is nonsense. Sir Belduke was murdered. What other possible reason could there be besides someone wanting him dead? I'm fairly positive this piece of evidence will lead us to the culprit's real motive. What piece of evidence is that, <laughs> Phoenix? <laughs> Very well, defense, present evidence. To indicate Jean Grail's motive for committing the crime. Um. Uh. The letter? From Belduke to the storyteller? I mean, I don't use these very often. I think it's safe to go ahead and just narrow down my choices because I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Uh, probably the letter. I mean, it's the only thing that makes sense. That tells me once again that should be probably it. Yep. Miss Grail had no reason for wanting to kill Sir Belduke. However, there was another incident that night which is related to this case. And I have an idea what it was. Another incident. I'm referring to this letter. Sir Belduke wrote a letter shortly before his death, yet all we have here are some blank sheets of parchment. Fascinating. Are you saying maybe a witch used some kind of ink removing magic on that letter, Mr. Wright? Uh, no. The spell used by the witch was, of course, Godor. My thought was... And I should have said this earlier before we went down this train of thought. Mm -hmm. Is I did think in the middle of last part that what if someone tried to get the letter and they actually switched out the contents of the letter and like just put in blank sheets of paper instead and just put it back in the mailbox. Huh. So potentially maybe Gene reached in there, grabbed the letter, switched the stuff out, put it back. How the strangling happened. Not quite sure yet, but let's figure that out. That we're, we're talking about the motive for murder right now, not motive well, for... Well, no, the point is, is that the initial motive was not murder. That's the th route that we're going down here. The murder happened some other way by accident. And that's the road we're going down right now. I just don't get how someone can accidentally strangle somebody. That's what we gotta find out. Let's go over the state of the crime scene one more time. As we know from Miss Mailer's testimony, the letter was in a letter box next to the victim's head. Ah, yes, it's in the sketch as well. The letter box is on the far side of the shelf. The point of the n the point of note is the location of that letter box. N unbelievable. As Wizard Barnum seems to have <laughs> noticed, the letter box is within reach of the small portal conjured by the witch behind the painting on the wall. Oh, indeed it is. And as Sir Belduke's butler you would have known exactly where he keeps his letters. Indeed, Master Belgi could always keep his letters in that letterbox before posting them. You, you imagine no such thing. It's a letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Grey Earl, you created a portal with Godor, not with the intention of killing Sir Belduke. You were after this letter, weren't you? That's merely wild conjecture. I didn't even know about that letter at the time. Mm, you didn't? Now that's very strange. When Miss Mailer came by that night, Sir Beldick was busy writing that letter. And that's when you entered, carrying a bottle of tomato juice. Uh There's no way you wouldn't have known that your master was writing a letter to someone. And you could have known even more than that. For instance, perhaps you knew what he was writing about. That's enough. I served Master Belgic as his butler. I never would have pried into his private affairs. Whatever it was he wrote about in his final letter to the storyteller. It is no concern of mine. Hmm. Your Honor, can I say, I gotcha. <laughs> yes, defense. I'd like Miss Grey Earl's last statement to be added to her testimony. If she didn't read it, she wouldn't have known it was addressed to the storyteller. Ooh, any objections, <laughs> Inquisitor Barnum? 
No, I'm alone. What were you going to say, to be fair, what? Uh, if we have... Uh, in our thing, it literally even says here, letter from Belduk to the storyteller. I mean, we only know that information because it because we got that from the owl that Luke talked Luke, to, yeah. ironically. But... Because the owl said to Luke. Yeah. And Luke told us. Well, witness, include what you just told us in your testimony. As you wish, my lord. I had no reason to take his life nor steal his letter to the storyteller. Boom. Objection. That's not it? No, that's, Never that's mind. the letter. Yes, that's the point that I thought... This guy should be... Fuck. Contradiction? I wonder where. I certainly cannot see it. Oh. But really? It's not contradicting it. It's agreeing with it. But it's the fact that... As motivation, I will have you know this. Could you present irrelevant evidence again? I will set a ferocious beast upon you. I, what? Oh, him. <laughs> I will do it for you. I'm feeling very motivated. Thank you, Your Honor. What the fuck? Why would you present the letter? Because that's the only thing of relevance. Because that's the fact, like, I thought we'd present that because of the fact that it's supposed to be secret. You're not supposed to know it's from the storyteller. Wouldn't it be the 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 the? the oh, I guess not. Never mind. Yeah, that's exactly. Maybe no. That, you don't even know what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, that was the only thing that made sense. I guess I'll press it and see if I there's something inside of it. I thought there were like the blank letter pages that you could present, but nope, you can't. <laughs> it's that's all just part of the letter. So I guess oh, I'll just press this. You never present something before pressing it. <laughs> Let me get this straight. And that's you what didn't happens. know anything about the victim's letter. That's right. I believe I've said as much already. Then, how did you know? How did you know it was addressed to the storyteller? See, all you had to do was press it. God damn it. And you, you, you lost health because of that. Because you're, you, 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 getting ahead of yourself. <laughs> so what I, I do indeed. best. I do it professionally. Okay. Why don't you answer this question, you, witness? You're crossing the metaphorical street before you look both ways. <laughs> It's true this letter is addressed to the storyteller. But when did you find out about it? Not when I read it. I've spoken about the murder with many people over the past three months. Sounds like someone's got something to say on that front. Excuse me, Miss Mailer. You do the stir thing? No. Oh! There it <laughs> is. This <laughs> is delayed. <laughs> I thought I caught her off guard. But it's her screech that's caught me off guard. I love her. Anyways, is there perhaps anything you'd like to add to Miss Grey Earl's testimony? Um, no, not really. In that case, let me ask you a different question. Did you tell Miss Grey Earl about Sir Belduke's letter? I don't know. <laughs> You're like a <laughs> kid that got caught. With the candy bar in his mouth. There, are you eating the chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> I do don't not, know. <laughs> do not beat around the bush, witness. Answer the question. If I may briefly interrupt. No, you may not. I'm testifying right now. If you wish to question Miss Mailer, please do so once you have finished interrogating me. She is not going to let me question Mailer from the looks of it. And if she's so keen to prevent her from answering, this might just be a critical point in the testimony. Gotta find another way of fishing in for that information. Witnesses, continue testifying. Okay. Okay, so... I'm gonna go back to this one. And where she would interrupt, I'll wait for now. Mm -hmm. And how'd you know? How did you know? <laughs> Is that storyteller? When did you find out? murder with many people the past Witness. three months we wait yep everyone has been very kind to me they all have also told me all sorts of things i must have heard about it from someone at some point mm, well eh, that incident was certainly much talked about would you not agree defense does her testimony hold together i'm gonna go for it this time it's contradiction. 
there is a huge contradiction in Miss Grail's testimony. Oh. You're becoming very predictable, Sir Blue Knight. If there's a contradiction, I hope you have the evidence to prove it. Here's my chance! I'm the only one to expose this contradiction! Oh. <laughs> I mean, the way I feel- that's not the way I wanted to- I wanted to see this stuff. We have so many hint coins. I- yeah, but like, we- We would never- we don't have a hint coin system in- in the Ace Attorney game, so this feels no, so wrong. No, but- it's just the fact of like it depends how they word the evidence part yeah because you know like i said i was so confident about the letter before you're confident about a lot of things that are incorrect I'll present the i'll present evidence the defense is ready to present evidence very well the defense shall present evidence of a different nature what does the defense believe to contradict Miss Grayrose's testimony? It's the only thing that would make sense. Nothing else would cut it. Nothing else would do it, man. Take that. Is it still not time? Oh my <laughs> god. That's the evidence. Now tremble in awe at the power of my reasoning. Can you repeat that last bit? I'm afraid I misheard. Even I have never used a catch penny line like that. Well, I trembled a little. All those chilling stares are giving me the shivers. Mr. Hyde, no matter how cold everyone else might be towards you, I'll always stay on your side. Saying that evidence was a big mistake trying to show off was an even bigger one. The one who ought to, to tremble is you, Sir Blue Knight. No. If it didn't work before, what made you think it would work again? Because I thought maybe this was the point in the game where it wanted it. No, it's not. Because <laughs> we've done that where we use the evidence too soon. Excuse me, Mr. Wright. Huh? What's up, Luke? Stop being an idiot. <laughs> Contradictions can be exposed without the need for evidence. The professor said something to this effect when Espella was on trial. Now that I think about it. Hey, gold boy. <laughs> Professor did talk about a different kind of weapon that I could use in court. Maybe we should keep that in mind and give it another try. Because we still need to get uh, Mailer to talk. That's what it's referring to. I don't think Mailer's going to say anything. You can try the confidentiality one again, but... Confidentiality obligation. Pretty must not disclose names. I'll tell you, Captain, I love gossiping. This is the same dialogue, though. Yes, so we can't get anything out of her. It's the thing. <laughs> no, it wasn't from... It was from her thing when Jean was talking. Yeah, and we did that, and we got shut down, remember? I don't know if it'll still do that again or not. It definitely will. That's kind of the way it goes. I think what Luke was talking about is to there not use evidence. And yeah. say we don't have evidence. You don't remember the what professor what the professor said before using the. He, uh, well, using I mean, the, Luke just said it. Yeah, not evidence, but using the witnesses' testimonies against each other. Remember, remember that whole thing. Yeah, I have to see if. Hang on, we just got to go through this whole thing again. So, give me a second. You know, so just a storyteller. Boom, boom. We got to go through all this. We need to find out. Spoken about murder with many people. The past three months. Leave it be. Uh, Keep oh, going through. Okay. Yeah, because no, we, we, we did that and then it just went in a loop. There was no other option we could do from there. We, oh, I... What'd you do? I was mashing the A button to get through the dialogue. But I pressed <sighs> the right thing anyways. That there's nothing odd in her testimony. To be honest, something she said doesn't quite feel right. But... I thought you were going to go over to the mail lady again. No, it, it cut us off already. Because the point was that Jean Guerrero was not going to let the mailer talk. We couldn't go any further with that. I can't come up with anything to prove there's a contradiction. That's good then. Let us continue the interrogation. Excuse me, Mr. Wright. Oh, what's up, Luke? 
Contradictions can be exposed without the need for evidence. The professor said something like that back when Espella was on trial. How do we... How do we... How do we start that then? Go to the Miller lady! Okay, I'm gonna show you once again what happens. If it works, I'm gonna laugh so hard. I'm just gonna show you. It could have changed after Luke said that though. That'd be very, that'd be a very weird turn of events to do it. So I'm just gonna show you that we got this. Spoken about the murder with many people over the past three months. No, why did it not? This fucking control scheme is garbage. <laughs> this control scheme is garbage. How did you do that? I was trying to go, oh, I tried to click on the picture, but instead of it seeing me click on the picture, I decided to go forward instead. Oh. Yes, I know, Luke. Contradictions is a part of the thing. I want to stop in this cycle of pain. It's killing me. I am dying. This... You wouldn't have to do this again if you did it the first time around like I asked you to. Hold on. Hold We're almost there. All right. Let's go through all this. Don't mash too hard because you'll skip well, it. Don't worry. It'll stop when she says the important thing where I can't skip anymore. Right here. Now, I click on the face. There we go. Question. Excuse me, Ms. Mailer. There's the <laughs> Sir jump in. Uh, the the ears ring. Is there perhaps anything you'd like to say? All right, in that case, let me ask you a different question. Did you start about this, uh, the ladder? Don't know. You need to answer. And then if I may briefly interrupt and tell you, not a dog. <laughs> yeah, she just cuts us off. There's no more anything to that. It was worth a shot. <laughs> it's better than throwing the letter at every single thing and, and losing health like you did. I'll just, oh, that's not what I want to do. I'll just see if maybe Hold this it. testimony updated, which would be weird, but courier to Sir Bell Duke, you were an orphan. <laughs> you stole everything, gave you a job as a courier. You had a little light feet and stuff. A lot to Mr. Bell Duke. The only thing that she makes- can zoom. <laughs> The only thing that makes sense. You do see where my 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 reasoning came from, right? No, I saw what you were saying, but it's the fact of with the way that the game's built is that that was already a dead end. Like was, there was not going to be any addition to it. There could have been though, which is what my thought process was. Because sometimes this game does things we don't expect. So. I have... Because this technically isn't a Capcom game. You gotta remember that. I know. <laughs> Alright. Come on, game. So, my thought is... We're gonna continue on through. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna use the How hint coins... How is this coins. gonna change anything? I keep fucking... Evan! <laughs> my no. god! Oh, oh, it hurts so bad. Oh, it hurts so bad having to do all this over and over again Mr. because Roy, of my own... you suck! <laughs> I know, I'm the worst at this. Everyone can laugh at my miserable failures as a lawyer. <sighs> Come on, like the 17th time's a charm. You have no patience. Hold it. I just, I don't want the people to suffer through all of the waiting of this. And in a, in, in a sense, you make it worse by making them suffer more by being impatient. God. All right. Spoken about the murder. You could always, you know, edit it down. That is a thing that you can do. It takes so much time for me to do. <laughs> you agree? All right. Hint system. God. Show me what to do. There's a contradiction. So we do go down this path. So we are supposed to present evidence. But what will it be? That is the question. Oh, there's a second fucking path on here that I can't present evidence. It's I can't. I forgot there's a second tree in there. That's what I forgot about. The defense has no intention of presenting evidence. What? What? The proof that there is a contradiction cannot be found in the court record. What? What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? 
We just went on a fucking wild out to goose me in chase. The previous witch trial. Lost health for no reason. In this court, an attorney's arsenal isn't limited to the court record. Oh, hi. Oh, it's, it's been a while. I'm going to need a little bit of a... My throat's starting to hurt anyways. Let me prepare myself for Layton. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Oh, back when he was alive. Uh. <laughs> Miss you every day, dog. Everywhere I go, I see his face. Oh, it's because he's right next to me. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Each of the witnesses in this trial has given their own account of what occurred. Therefore, if one witness has testified, the other remaining witnesses have listened. Should one witness testimony differ from another's testimony, then I suppose that in itself can also be considered a contradiction, can it not? Yeah, see, that's what I was remembering. Yeah, it was just how we got to that point. I was trying to figure out how to get there. Juxtaposing contradictory testimonies from different witnesses is the key. Miss Gray Earl? Your testimony contradicts another one that we've heard in this court today. Here Others. we go. Yes. This is what I was hoping to to progress to. There was one of man. Uh, it's gonna be this one. Never once broken the confidential obligation, so it's impossible. Objection. That was Luke turned him. Oh. Luke and Aspella turned his statue. <laughs> and oh they're trying to hide. <laughs> it was a single word that gave you away, Miss Gray Earl. What? What do you mean by that? The name of the recipient. There were only a few people who knew the intended recipient of that letter. Four people to be precise. Only four people? First was Sir Belduke, the author of the letter. This also sounds like greatest attorney music. <laughs> then there was Miss Mailer. It heard who me. Delivered it heard me. <laughs> the game heard me. <laughs> and of course the storyteller, its recipient, as well as one more person. The one who stole the letter using a portal spell and swapped it with the blank sheets of parchment. The witch. Maybe! Maybe I did! Maybe I spilled the beans! About the letter, I mean! Maybe I turned the butler! You did what? Um, uh, because you see, me and the butler are sort of friends. And it was about our dear Sir Belduke. I feel like it might have told you about it after all. See? If I did, that's how she knew about the re recipient. I mean. I understand that you were friends with Miss Grayer and you want to help her out. <clears throat> but I've got a piece of advice, Miss Mailer. You shouldn't lie even for a friend. Huh? Remember your testimony. You told us about the courier's duty to keep the details of letters confidential. And you've also testified that you have never broken that obligation. Remember? Ah! Objection! <laughs> but hold on just a minute. If the victim's butler, Jean Varel, might have had a chance to catch a glimpse of the envelope. Objection! No, she didn't. Mwah. When Miss Mailer came with the delivery, Sir Belduc was still writing that letter. In fact, he was in the middle of it. At that time, the letter had not been addressed yet. And the next morning, when the body was discovered, that letter was already in the letter box. Keep in mind that Miss Grayero would have had no opportunity to see it then either. Is that so? She went to report the crime, not even setting foot in the study. And then Miss Mailer appeared and retrieved the letter. Needless to say, Miss Grayero couldn't have learned of the letter's recipient afterwards. Or maybe you have a good explanation, Miss Gray Earl. I'd very much like to hear one. Can you please tell the court how you found out the recipient's name? Oh boy. Mr. Wright? Um, yes? Do you remember the 21st night of September? Oh my God. What I said when I was <clears throat> called to the witness stand? Yes? At the heart of alchemy lies the pursuit of the rules and logic that govern nature. You have demonstrated the power of your own logic. Miss Grey Earl? 
are, are you saying? Yes, I confess. The abhorrent witch who used the spell Godor to swap the contents of that letter and who took the life of Master Belduke, it was none other than I. That was a fast turnaround. Why, though? That is the great question. <clears throat> like, she looks sad about it. Not a typical villain, like, it was me, ha ha ha. It no, like I said, there was an accident behind mm -hmm. it. How exactly you strangle someone to death by accident is a great question, but... Yeah, that's what I've been saying. I was an only child, born to a poor family. I've been a witch since I was very little. When did I become aware of it? I don't remember. Although I was but a young child, I knew that being a witch was a crime. That's why I hid my witch's scepter and wouldn't use magic at all. Oh. My father worked as a bricklayer. He toiled every day, but we could hardly make ends meet. One winter day, we couldn't afford to pay the rent. We were going to lose the house. My mother was in tears and my father was sitting with his head down, wordless. I want money for mummy and daddy. That day I suddenly remembered about the witch's scepter that I had hidden. The Gondor spell. I thought I'd try it, just once, casting the spell. But at the time I had no idea what an irreversible mistake that would be. Uh. Oh no. Even though no one told me, I knew from the very beginning what magic I was able to use. Did you accidentally turn your parents into gold or something? What should I turn into gold? I was thinking about it really hard, the little girl that I was. Something that wouldn't stand out, that would be taken for a work of art. Then I decided I chose a pretty leaf that had fallen in our garden. And you hit the goat instead. <laughs> But, it wasn't the right thing to do after all. I was terribly punished for using magic, even just the once. Punished? In what way were you punished? I placed the leaf down in the back garden and cast a spell, but then... Margaret suddenly walked in front of me. Margaret? My closest childhood friend. Margaret. Right before my eyes, she... she was turned into gold. It's the fucking goat. Oh dear me! I screamed and cried, but I knew I couldn't ask anyone for help. If anyone had seen it, they would have known it was a work of magic. And I knew Margaret wasn't coming back. That... that's terrible. Then... my mother and father's faces flashed before my eyes. We may have been very poor, but we were always happy together. And I've been captured as a witch, I feared my parents probably wouldn't be safe either. That thought tormented me more than anything, and so I made the decision. I decided to end my own life. Well, that's bold. Wow. I threw myself into the river near the town. It was winter and the water was as cold as ice. I couldn't even move. It was painful. My consciousness started drifting away. And then you were saved by the alchemist. <laughs> he pulled you out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next thing I knew, I was in Master Belduke's residence. He risked his own life jumping into the freezing river to save me. I burst into tears and told him everything. I didn't want to go back home. I would only end up causing my parents grief. Master Belduc listened to me without interrupting, and then he told me this. You can stay here, but from now on, you must live as a boy. Master Belduc met with my parents and explained everything to them. They were very sad, but they agreed it would be best if I didn't return home. Poor Miss Grayo. I must have been so awful for her. Master brought the house. Bought but, the house. But I, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> bought the house for my parents so they wouldn't have to worry about paying rent anymore. As for Margaret, 
turned into gold, uh, he brought her to his residence. He knew that it any if anyone saw her, they would report an incident of witchcraft. And this Miss Margaret, is she still in her golden state? Uh-huh. Yes, she is. God. <laughs> That's strange. We've received no reports of anyone by that name having gone missing. Margaret is being kept in the basement under Master's study. The basement? It's funny because Phoenix <laughs> thought it was a work of art. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this Margaret, is she a... Uh... Yes, my dear friend, was a goat that we were keeping at our house. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> a goat? Until then, Master Belzuk had mainly been researching medicine. But since the incident with Margaret, he became known as an alchemist. So that's when he became an alchemist. I was wondering why the goat was the only thing not covered in dust. That's how I started a new life as Master Belduke's butler. So Belduke would sometimes work as a physician, curing the townspeople of their illnesses. As his assistant, you have also shown commitment to helping the townspeople through your work. I forgot about being a witch and was able to live happily, at peace with everyone. I thought it could stay like that forever. But... Well, those peaceful days came to an abrupt end. Tell us, what in the world was the cause? Even I'm not quite sure what led to this. However, it all started three months ago with that lightning strike. Back to that again. I mean, this had a sh seismic shift in yeah. him, so... Master Belgic and I were on our way back home carrying specimens for experiments. An old bell tower appeared before in the flames. Everyone who saw it was stupefied. But the expression on Master Belduke's face was unlike anything I'd seen before. What do you mean? His face went pale and twisted in sheer terror. He was shaking violently. It wasn't just astonishment at an unusual phenomenon. It seemed as if he was afraid of something more concrete. Perhaps the Belduk saw something that others couldn't. He cancelled his experiments that night and began writing a letter to someone. A letter? I found out about it when I brought him his bottle of tomato juice. He was writing feverishly, as if he were possessed. I... I saw some things. A few words in that letter. Expose everything. Cannot keep this secret any longer. The truth about the witch. I suppose that'd make me a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Master Belduke was going to confess that I was a witch. Maybe not you, though. Oh god, that's Maybe gonna kinda suck. Misread it. Yeah. Oh, everything went back in front of my eyes. Black, not back. I will never forget the feeling that overwhelmed me at that moment. Is that when you decided to commit the crime? What I did first was accidentally singe a part of the wall in my room. It was an excuse to repaint that section of the wall green. Then you also painted the wall behind that painting in Sir Belduke's study. And when that fateful night came... I used a syringe to inject a soporific through the cork and into the bottle of tomato juice. So many thoughts were running through my head as I wished Master goodnight. I opened the portal behind him. He was right there in front of me, asleep. I reached the letter in the letterbox, taking care not to wake him. And then I happened to notice the name on the envelope. Storyteller. When I read that name, the world all around me turned black once more. 
It's impossible to avoid what is written by the storyteller. It seemed as if I could hear the doors to all escape route shutting closed. It was a sound of despair. Despair? No. Okay. I would like you to believe me that the thought of taking Master Belduke's life never once occurred to me. I only planned to steal that letter and then disappear, but as I looked upon Master sleeping there in front of me, at that moment, I felt an evil presence awaken within me. Why did he save my life? And why did he betray me? Before I realized what I was doing, my hands were clutching his neck. He didn't move at all, so I... I kept on clenching his neck. That's it. That's the truth about what happened three months ago. Oh boy! Ooh. Hell of a story there. Yeah. <sighs> There's just one thing I fail to understand. Yes? You said you wanted to run away once you had stolen the letter. And despite that, you continue to live in Sir Belduc's residence. Now here you stand. Why did you not run away? That is a great question. Should we continue this a little bit, or do we save this for next time? Because we're <laughs> running a little over. <laughs> oh. Oh gosh, probably save it. Alright. We'll save the truth for next time. But I do have a thought that we'll end this on. Okay. And I think the thought is, is that obviously at some point... Jean opened the letter to read for herself what was in there uh -huh. and then probably saw that it was not about her at all, uh -huh. which probably made her feel horrible and put back the fact in there of having to kind of serve him even afterwards. By taking after care passing, of the place. By taking care of the place and then potentially later on taking up the alchemy that he was working on. Yeah. But. But now. Oh man, what a bunch of shit. Oh, literally got got for no reason. Boy, that's after uh, she had already whew. tried to take herself out as a child. Man. Whoo! This is gonna be a doozy. This next game time. is dark. Uh-huh. 